everyone, and I'm Nico Larover, and I'm going to present to you uh, a little experiment in trying to implement social uh, variables inside predictive modeling in order to understand why did farmers, Roman farmers, in, in, uh, implement sites, Google Forms, here or there, which are the factors behind that. And I believe that there is still a lot of work to do in the social variables. So first of all, the study case is located in northern France, as you can see very close to the channel, uh, with southeastern south England visible in the, in the upper corner. And it currently contains slightly more than 2,000 rural settlements inside this area, which is quite large. So in order to study it, uh, I had to divide it in four micro-regions, which uh, are all uh, along the, the river Somme, which is, uh, of course, uh, the center of the department. And uh, as you can see, there are still a lot of sites. So these micro-regions were selected in order to, to, to have proper archaeological documentation inside them. Uh, so they still contain uh, one, uh, 822 rural settlements in these four micro-regions. So these settlements include uh, very diverse uh, morphologies of sites, uh, some of which are entirely made of wood. The vast majority is constructed out of stone, and as you can see, some of them are very large villi, uh, such as this example in the eastern some. So when studying uh, the social elements inside the Roman archaeology, there, there tends to be very large contradictions, especially because uh, Roman archaeology is historical archaeology. So when uh, looking at more theoretical papers, we can read a lot about uh, the very intensive social, economic, cultural interconnectivity between everyone in the empire, or the provinces between each other, the regions, cities, the countryside to the cities, and yet, in general practice, when studying uh, rural settlement patterns especially, uh, there tends to not be that much focus on the interconnection between the different elements. Also, in terms of behavior, as you, as we have seen uh, previously, it's a, it's a very important concept inside culture and social in general. And this behavior tends to, to also be taken only uh, into account in a very uh, systematic way, systemic way also, uh, through general practice. And also you have more collective trends being taken into consideration while in a very um, philosophical sense, uh, only individual behavior is at the fundamental cause of uh, any phenomenon in social archeology. span But I do not claim to be able to completely translate uh, predictive modeling into uh, this theoretical approach, but I will try to see if through some collective trends we can approximate a certain idea of human behavior regarding site location. So, a few days ago, uh, a good colleague of mine uh, uh, gave me, uh, let's say, a provocating, uh, provocative uh, statement, and yet uh, I, I believe a legitimate one, He's an historical archaeologist, and for him, any kind of modeling approach towards site location analysis is like flogging a dead horse. So it's, it doesn't need to be for, for him, because uh, we do have a lot of Roman sources who tell about all the different vari variables they thought were important in order for them to buy a farm, manage this farm, and for this farm to be successful. And these uh, different uh, parameters are generally taken into account in uh, monographic studies in which, uh, uh, in a very empirical manner, things are tested out against uh, a map. But there is no quantitative support generally to, to aid into that sense. So these ancient authors, the agronomists uh, from the 3rd century BC to uh, the 4th century AD, they, they share the same uh, conceptions of space and its relation to people they do uh, put a lot of focus on the physical environment, uh, although uh, we, we would expect a bit more socio-economic criteria, but they still really uh, emphasize the role of neighborhood, human neighborhood, 
in the, the successful implementation of a site. And also, obviously, the accessibility of all kinds of economic uh, local points, roads, and cities. So, even if we do have a lot of sources and we need to find some sort of quantitative way to evaluate its, uh, its reality in the archaeological documentation, we do have to, to remember that these authors only describe uh, farming practices which are common in the Mediterranean and in very uh, typical landscapes, uh, such as this idyllic description of Tuscany, with a lot of hills and very diverse types of productions, such as uh, vineyard, olive trees, uh, grain farming, as well as cattle uh, herding, uh, which is not the, the case in the sun, which, as you can see, is slightly less hilly and a little bit more flat. So we can kind of uh, talk about uh, an open land farming uh, practice in this area. Since the Bronze Age, this land is very open and also it's very unconstraining in terms of physical environment. And there are very few types of productions, very mainly grain, grain farming and cattle herding, and that's about it. So therefore, to, to test uh, different hypotheses on social uh, variables, I have uh, created very, very simple uh, uh, methodology, which is completely theory-driven and not that data-driven, Therefore, I just start with a formal uh, sentence about what do I think is, uh, uh, favorizes uh, the implantation of this site or another. And this hypothesis is then translated into a pseudo formula, such as if you have market proximity and you have road proximity, therefore you should have more frequency of sites in this area. Then this uh, uh, pseudo formula is then uh, directly translated into a map, handcrafted map, with classes representing these specific uh, uh, IDs behind. So, for example, we start with a, a model here of the landform through a topographic uh, indication. Though, uh, as you can see, it's still important to, to inspect uh, 2D, uh, 2D documentation and not only numbers. Because, as you can see, the fourth microregion on the lower left, on the lower right, doesn't display as much diversity as the other three, mainly because it's the flattest one of the four. Therefore, the landforms are really hard to, to derive from, from a DEM. Therefore, I, I had to, <coughs> to choose another methodology towards that, which is a deviation from mean uh, elevation, and which, as you can see, uh, still now displays a lot of variation, even in a very, very flat uh, area. So then this map is reclassified into three expected classes, which means that in the red area, I would expect, expect along my theory, that there will be a lot of sites. In the yellow one, no influence, neither negative nor positive from uh, the variable. And finally, the green area, where uh, Supposedly, there should be nearly no site. Then, if this variable is uh, uh, valid in terms of uh, uh, validating the, the hypothesis, then it can be combined with other valid uh, variables. So, these ones are only for the physical uh, landscape. And then there is the uh, evaluation of the model, which is very simple in my case. It doesn't involve in any sort of multivariate uh, uh, statistics but only indicative values of predictive power, which depend only on the number of sites and the area of each class. So uh, we will only focus with, on the indicative value right here. So very simply, if you have 0 0.19 as a, an indicative value in your class, it means that this class presents 19% uh, as many sites as there should be if there was no influence at all in the class. So it means simply that this area is really bad for site location. So I, I will skip on the, the physical uh, landscapes uh, results, but uh, as you can see, some of these uh, variables still possess some sort of influence on site location, mainly slope, 
the, the, run, the land form, and uh, finally the, the multivariate model, including this as well as the, the path distance to rivers. So I, I prefer to, to model uh, distance through path modeling, cost path, uh, because of its, uh, let's say, higher realism to, towards uh, the, the behavior people had towards their landscape. So these are different, uh, different kinds of uh, social variable I try to, to create. This one is uh, openness analysis, negative openness analysis, uh, which simply means that uh, areas in, uh, in red are on a prominent location. Therefore, they look down upon other areas around them, in green, for example. And it, this specific variable doesn't show much uh, correlation with site location, unfortunately, which is the case for many variables, so it's always important to try them and test them and refine the classification until it fits both your hypothesis and then maybe have the expected results. This uh, other uh, uh, model here is a, a cumulative view shed towards the visibility of sanctuaries because maybe some people back then had a, a a better, a better position in the landscape if they could see the gods, simply. So uh, this uh, variable wasn't very successful either, although it slightly improved um, the location of the most uh, prominent sites such as villas. This one here is the, the, the one which I believe uh, fits the best uh, my global hypothesis on site location, which is that the economic focal points in the landscape are really important magnets towards uh, site location. And in this case, uh, this is a combination uh, of uh, several variables, but the, the physical landscape uh, altogether, as well as path distance to roads, the main cities, as well as our, uh, regional and local markets, villages. So, uh, the, the final results are very, uh, very easy also to, to display here. So very few of them actually work. And they don't display, uh, as you can see, very high values, uh, indicative values, maximal values. So you don't reach something like uh, three times as many sites as would be expected. It's always lower. It might be due to the kind of landscape we are talking about here which is very non-deterministic. So therefore, in terms of uh, socio-economic variables, we do possess some, uh, a lot more consistent results in terms of uh, quantitative uh, results regarding site location compared to the physical landscape, uh, which means simply that uh, low expected areas always have lower indicative values, whereas high expectation areas do have higher site concentrations. Also, the range between these lower and higher values is larger, which also means that the areas which are not well connected regarding the socio-economic uh, focal points are less, uh, less uh, suitable for farming and for building a large villa, for example but there are still very uh, inconsistent uh, results in some of the micro regions, especially the fourth one, as we could see uh, on the lower right, which was very flat, and everything was accessible from there, both the cities and the, the local markets. There are many other potential variables which could be uh, computed, but for this specific uh, uh, area, I do believe that uh, the, the data set doesn't allow, for example, land use heritage computing, which, uh, which is simply the, the materialization of uh, the history of land use around a potential farm. So uh, towards the non-deterministic -de landscape, it's, it's not very often done, I believe, uh, predictive modeling in that sort of landscape because of the difficulties uh, uh, regarding the f physical landscape and its lack, certain lack of influence. So, and also because some variables are clearly in indirect causality to site location. They do not directly influence site location. 
and there are as always many biases uh, both in the construction of the model, in the data itself, towards the testing of the model. In conclusion, I do believe it's very important, even in the Roman Empire, to, to test local variations in uh, site location patterns because uh, the general trends presented by the Roman authors do not apply everywhere. There is also a certain infinity, infinity of potential individual choices, ultimately, which we cannot reconstruct one by one because we, we can only look at trends through data. And there are many other potential, uh, potential models and variables which could be uh, thought about, but impossible to, to, to model, such as, for example, the, the quality of your neighbors. How do you quantify the quality of your neighbor? Is it a good neighbor, a bad neighbor? Can you give a, a rate for that? It's, it's very hard to say. And then, something I think uh, should be kept more in mind, especially for the Roman Empire, is that the agronomists do give a lot of detail, but they do not explain how to build a farm, where to build a farm, but where to buy a farm and where not to buy a farm, which means that you could buy a farm located in a very bad location because they were, there were many farms in very bad location. Therefore, even their preconizations are very uh, unreachable. So, on that, I conclude. Thank you very much.